after my last video comparing the Mastec MS2108 clamp meter against the Unity UT204A, I thought people might like to see how these actually perform as clamp meters, their primary function. So here I have um, my Bryman connected up in series to this wire here, which is a coil of 10 wires. So the current shunt, the Bryman is connected up to this. The 10 wires here, or the 10 passes, is to multiply the amount of current that each of these meters see so that we see more of their full scale range instead of working down on their bottom ranges. Uh, I have the, uh, the AC load, or the AC um, current, is through a, a portable heater that has a pulse width modulation control on the output. So you will see the difference between an average reading meter and a true RMS reading meter and we will compare them both to this. Now the, currents, the current readings on both of these meters will be one-tenth of what you see here because of the multiplication of the wires passing through here ten times. So let's turn on the... oh let's turn it back off just for a second. We should zero everything out here so we'll zero that out. Now let's try that again. That's close to zero. We'll zero out the Unity and we cannot zero out the Mastec. It's stuck with whatever offset it thinks it has so we lose some accuracy there right away. So now we will turn on the heater and I will turn up the current or the power to the heater here and you can see how the two different clamp meters respond in reference to the Bryman. So this one should read 16.97, 17. You can see it's reading a little bit high. Uh, that's, uh, I believe that's just within its specifications. I'll, I will have to check that later. And this one is reading very low because it's reading, uh, it's reading the pulse width modulation and not getting a, a true RMS reading. It's doing an averaging. So let's crank up the heater to full. And as you can see, as I crank it up, the Unity starts catching up with the other ones. Uh, right when I get near the top of the current draw, the Unity starts to catch up with the other two meters as far as what it sees for the current flowing through it. It's still quite low. This one's a little bit high, but I would say that's pretty good. So there we go, this is with an AC current measurement through the jaws here in comparison with a high accuracy current measurement here. So it would appear that yes, the Mastec is better at this current measurement range than the Unity is right now. But of course this is running averaging mode so it still could be out mainly because of the average reading uh, uh, as opposed to the true RMS reading. So we're up to 4 amps here. These both should be reading 40 amps. Alright, another thing I'm going to try here is a the inrush current function on this on the AC mode. So let's compare it to what the Bryman will see. We'll hit crest here. So we wait for that one. It sees one crest. Yes, it's going to beep like crazy. Sorry about that. And we'll put this on the inrush mode. And then I will turn on the heater at full power momentarily and see if the Mastec reads anything. It should read an instantaneous inrush of somewhere around 35 amps or something like that. I, have to, I will have to check the manual. Maybe it doesn't read inrush below a certain amount of current, but this will be be a, a pulse and there we go it did read it 48.6 amps opposed to 4.63 so yes the inrush does work on the Mastec I've reconfigured these meters so now that they are connected up to my function generator running a pure AC sine wave we're not going to get the same kind of resolution out of these things because, well, we can't generate the same amount of current out of my function generator. I could connect it up to an amplifier, but this will show you the uh, difference, I think. 
So right now with it at its lowest, you can see that it's outputting approximately 1.95 milliamps. And this is not zeroing at all. Uh, again, you cannot zero this, so it's, uh, it's reading something when there's basically no current. Actually, let me disconnect the current. And you will see that that the mass tech does not change at all. This one's reading OK. And so I will connect it back up to the function generator and I will crank it up to around 100 milliamps of AC sine wave. Might be a little bit of distortion in here because of the loading that I'm putting on the, the function generator with this current shunt in the and these wires here. You can see that the down at this range we're we're all 10% out on this one. This one we are 12% out even no 22% out sorry even though that uh, it was reading high it's earlier it's reading low right now. Let's uh, switch it over to triangle wave take it back up to 100 milliamps approximately and this is reading a little bit lower this one's reading the same so not much of a difference there let's take it to square wave and take it back down to 100 approximately and you can see that Wow, this one uh, this one's reading more correctly than this on the low range. Even uh, though it's not true RMS, it's matching the the Bryman more more closely. This shouldn't be reading, of course, exactly the same. This is reading a square wave. It shouldn't be seeing that. But it's possible that the uh, the coil that I have here and the way things are loading up, it's turning this more into a sine wave. But you get an idea that uh, things don't necessarily agree between the mass tech and the other meters when it gets down into the low current ranges. I have these multimeters and the clamp meters uh, reconfigured to connect to my DC power supply right now. And so we will check how these agree on just pure DC power up at reasonable current ranges. That's why I still have the coil in here so we can still see this, these at their higher resolutions. So uh, first of all, let's zero everything out. That's close enough. Now let's try that again and let's zero this one out and look at how far out this one is let's zero that and it bounces all around all over the place this is pretty useless down down in the less than 100 milliamps you're getting basically no reading at all and let's connect the power supply and we have a little bit of current going through here i have it limited very low so let's uh, turn up the power a little bit here or the current i should say and let's get it up to oh that says well half an amp and then let's turn it up more let's get it up to around one amp one and a half amp that's good enough and they all agree fairly closely now at that range let's turn it up to 3 amps, more or less. And uh, again, the Mastec is reading higher than the Unity, and they are both wrong. They're both not reading the, the correct thing. And you can see here me putting the wires directly in the center even makes it worse. So this one's really not doing that great a job. It's, uh, it's reading quite a bit high. Same thing with the Unitech or Unity, sorry, the Unity, move it uh, into the correct position, it gets a little bit out. I could put this back on the other side, let's take that off, zero that out again, and we'll put it on the same direction as the other one, so they're both seeing the same current, or the same direction, and uh, they both read a little bit high right now. Okay, let's turn this all the way up to the top of my my capabilities here uh, too high the uh, 
Unity doesn't want to go that high. It gives him bleats away at you telling you've gone outside of its range, which is good. So up around 39 amps on these indications, they, they agree fairly closely, but they're still higher than the Bryman. And then we'll turn this to the 600 amp range and turn this up as high as it will go. And we're up to, this should be reading somewhere around 60 amps. You can see that's, that it's out, but maybe that's because I have to zero it again when I change ranges. So let's take it out and we will zero it. Yeah, that's why. So we zero it again, put it back on here. And yeah, they agree fairly well up in the higher ranges on the current range. But what if we were to put it directly on without the, uh, the loop in the way? So we'll take these both off the uh, multiplication loop and we'll put it on one pass of the wire here. We'll do them individually just because it's easier for me to do that right now. So we put that on there, turn this back. Uh, I should zero it out again. And you can see each time you take a, a, a clamp meter off and open and close the jaws that the Hall effect sensor can change its offset. So put it there, put it back around the wire. And it's reading a little bit high in that direction. And then we take the Mastec. Again, it needs to be zeroed out again. Put it back on. Mastec is reading very high. We have the, the current reversed from what this meter is seeing. Uh, so let's try it with the wire the other way around. Well, every time you open and close the jaws, you'll get a different offset. So we have to re-zero that again. Put that around the wire. And it reads lower this time. Let's do the same thing with the Unity. It's reading zero right now. We'll put it on this direction, have it agree with the right polarity. And the Unity seems to be more stable on its readings. So there you go. There is the, there is the difference between the two meters on how they measure current through the jaws, which is what they were meant to do. Uh, this one still does not impress me that much. Uh, I guess it does what it's supposed to do on true RMS, but that is about all. I don't trust it for anything.